Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Loco23 here. We are joining me back for the App Choices Most Wanted, Chapter 13, Outlaw. Let's go ahead and get to it. Now playing as Detective Dave Reyes, you and Sam Park outside the faded fa facade of the best coast sound in M Santa Monica. You enter to find three burly bodyguards waiting in the studio. Skinny producer hunches over the soundboard. Okay, I'm gonna need you to run back the last eight bars of the second verse. He cues up the track through the glass. You can see Haley resume singing into the mic, headphones on. You flash your badge as the producer turns to stare at you. We need to talk to Haley. It's important. Not as important as this single, bruh. Gotta have a label tomorrow. Before Haley gets on that fancy ass private jet here of hers and books it to Europe. So we have Charm the Producer, have Sam pull Haley on, and wait patiently. You can try Charm the Producer. Hey, you're T-Rex, right? Huge fan. You got robbed off the Grammy last year. Hell yeah, aficionado in the building. Man, I could listen to your gangsta house mixtap all day. What do you say to doing a fan of solid? Let me talk to Haley there. T-Rax, thanks for a second. The press is a button on the soundboard. Take five. Got some folks here. Want to talk? Sam shoots you an impressed look at, as Haley steps out of the booth. She hesitates upon seeing you. What's going on? What happened? Is this about Jamie? I heard what happened. The... Bezzling? The bomb? But you don't need to worry about me. After your captain told me this guy was so obsessed with me, I called up on my bodyguards. I'm safe. This isn't a checkup, Haley. We should talk. Privately. The bodyguards bristle, standing their guard. It's okay. Detective, it's fine to talk in front of my guys. Trust me, you want this to be private. Give Haley a meaningful look. She seems oblivious at the first, then at dawn's on her. Boys, give us a minute. Hey, you sure that's... Get out. Haley watches as Doring swing shut after them. Her face is in a mask of resentment. Whatever it is you have to say, say it and get out. We both know it's not going to be that quick. John Tull is your father, Haley. It's time to come clean. I'm sorry. I really don't know what you're talking about. Haley, don't lie to us. I'm not. That freak isn't my dad. I was raised by my grandma in Palos Verdes. We've all read the bio on your website. We know it's made up. Listen, if you say this to anyone, I'll sue the entire LAPD for slander. Where's your proof? Our proof is the photos. You show Haley copies of the photos from your fo her phone and Tull's trailer. That's it? That's your proof? You realize two girls can own the same shirt, right? My lawyers are going to have your badges. Well, you gotta admit, they look pretty similar, and... Forget the pictures, Haley. You can't run from your blood. We have Tall's DNA, and we could easily get yours. Haley holds um, Sam, Sam's severe gaze, her lips starting to tremble, and she breaks down in tears. You squat down beside her, softening your voice. Haley, this is serious. We need the truth. Did you know your father was killing people here? I'm... I'm so sorry. I should have told you from the start. My... My real name is Haley Tull. I'm from Dent County, Missouri. John Tull is my dad. You have no idea how much I hated it there. Every night, I dreamed of getting out. Of coming to California. Starting over. So eight years ago, after my dad was arrested for stabbing that guy with a broken bottle, 
That was my chance! I came down here, met Jamie at an open mic. He gave me the name Haley Rose. Did Tall contact you when he escaped? He came to my house. He scared me so bad. I, I couldn't turn him in. I was too scared. I told him to stay away, but he wouldn't leave me alone. When those news of me leaked, he just went crazy. He thinks he's protecting me? He kept saying he'd do anything for me. Haley grabs her hands. You have to know how sorry I am. I should have said something, but I was so scared of him finding out and hurting me. Please don't let him get to me. No, because him getting to you is exactly what we want. What? what Sam, what are you talking about? Tull isn't just watching from afar, killing Haley's enemies. He's contacting her directly. He wants her back in, in, in his life. I get it. You're talking about a trap. If Haley contacts her dad and asks him to meet, how much you want to bet he shows? Whoa, wait. No way. Look, my dad's a psycho. What if he sees through your trap? What if he kidnaps me or whatever? Sam levels a serious look at you. Dave, this is it. This is our chance to nail him. She's right. One of us has to convince Haley to go along with this. But who? Well, shit. Um... <sighs> this one's tough. I think Dave has more skill. We have to go off a of skill, too. Um, than Sam. Sam is more of a rough and tough type. But, um... Sam proposed the idea, so let's go with Sam. Now playing is Deputy Marshal Samantha Macy. Dave gives you a subtle nod, angling you to take the lead. You have to help us, Haley. Uh, no! I, I don't. All of this is on you. If you had come to us the second he showed up in L.A., Gavin Roth would still be alive. That's not my fault! Actually, it is. Because you didn't come to us sooner, and if you don't play ball, I guarantee you'll be haunted by the guilt forever and have a jail with your father. Hmm. Tough one. Tough one. Well, figuring um, that you know someone's doing something, you have contact with them and everything, I mean, that's kind of against the law, so... Wait, what? I didn't do anything! You knew what he's been up and doing. You kept quiet. That's an accessory to murder. Your career is over, Haley. No, no, wait, wait, I... I'll arrange to meet him. I'll help you catch him. Haley wipes a tear. You feel a sting of remorse. Can, can we do it tomorrow? I have to be on set tomorrow. For your first film role, right? Grief? The one with Cassandra Lay? We'll plan it for tomorrow, then. But we're gonna put a police escort on you tonight, in addition to your bodyguards. Just a precaution. I'll send an officer, or a friend of mine, Officer McKinsey. I trust her, and she's a good cop. You'll be in safe hands. You stand up and head towards the exit. Wait! P please Don't leak this to the press. I don't want my fans to find out who I really am. Now playing as Deputy Marshal Samantha Macy. That evening, you're back at the LAPD Major Crimes Unit. Dave gives orders to officers assigned to protect Haley's film set. Standard escort detail. The soundstage is a big place, so keep a regular patrol of each exit. Oh, and Mackenzie, do me a favor. I want you to stay close to Haley. Keep an eye on her for me. 
She seems really shaken by all this. You can count on me, Dave. As an officer, as Officer McKenzie and the two other uh, uniformed cops head out, Captain Beckham assembles the rest of the team. Thanks to Reyes and Macy's investigation, we have our best chance yet to capture fugitive John Tull. Tomorrow, Haley would call him to set up a meet at a time and location of our choosing. He'll walk right into our hands. I can set up a system to make it look like the calls are originating from whatever we want. You know, in case John Tall mounters caller ID. He might be caught off guard, but he's still dangerous. The grenades and incendiary shotgun rounds we've reported uh, to have can cause major damage. Boy can wreck shop. We'll need a place where Haley would believably meet him in secret, but one where we can stay out of sight. Hmm. That's a tough one. The trailer park. Hmm. Can hide in other places. Eh, Haley's mansion? Or a coffee shop? Oh. Well, if we do the ca coffee shop, it risks other people being hurt. So cross that out. Plus, Haley would be, you know, we don't know about paparazzi or whatever. There's just too many anomalies. Um, trailer park, there's a chance of innocence as well. But I think Haley's Mansion would be the best shot. Haley's Mansion, huh? Private residence, no one watching, plus room for us to hide our people. That just might work. Yeah, that's the idea. It's also our home, the center of a life, exactly where Tull wants to be. You offer to let him in, he'll show up. Then we got a plan. I'll prop the SWAT team. Because tomorrow morning, we nail that bastard. Later, da Dave is giving you a ride back to Cassandra's penthouse. Lean your head against the window, watching Los Angeles blur past, feeling the vibration of the road. You holding up okay? Huh? Uh, yeah. You should be. You crack this mess of a case. Tomorrow morning, Tall will be in handcuffs. You did damn good work, Marshal. I think I'm just tired. Haven't slept great since... since Bill. Well, try to get some rest tonight. You'll need it. Because I've got a feeling Tall's not going down with that a hell of a fight. Dave punches on the radio and flips through the stations. He cycles through the West Coast hip-hop, 80s rock, and L.A. underground punk before a familiar voice crones over the airwaves. You kill, you steal, you burn the daylight Cause you're my broken bad outlaw That's Haley's, right? Outlaw? Yep. Can't believe it still gets airplay after all these years. You know, it's almost funny thought Tall was completely crazy to think this song was about him. Turns out it was. With a kiss goodbye, you told me to hide. You'd make it everything okay. You'd make it all go away. You sit up a little straighter, listening. A kiss goodbye. If this song is really about Tall, what do you think she's talking about? I'd assume she's talking about when he was arrested eight years ago. Make it all go away? Your mind races. The murder he went to jail for... He was pulled over for a busted headlight, right? Yeah, the officer found a body in the trunk. That, uh, 19-year-old guy. Right, the file said the victim was killed by a... Broken bottle. Wow! Your memory's like a steel trap. Yeah, he broke from his usual ammo of a sawed-off shotgun to the gut. Right. Tall went crazy on him. Stabbed him 50, 60 times. Nearly took his head off. When he confessed right after the arrest, he said he'd gotten too drunk and lost his cool. Exactly. That's what doesn't make sense. Why confess? We didn't know it at the time, but he had a daughter back home. Sure, he was caught red-handed, but 
Do you really think a guy like Tull would just cooperate and never see Haley again? Think about it, Haley is what, 26 years old now? She would have been 18 back then, about the same age as the victim. Wait, are you saying what I think you're saying? Yeah, I think Haley knew the Vic, and I think that Toll took the fall for her. Hold on, time out. We're talking about the same Haley Rose, right? You think she murdered that guy in Toll's trunk? Why else would Toll confess and lose Haley forever? Reyes, he was protecting her. The MO didn't fit. He had the excuse of claiming to be drunk, and the Missouri PD was so relieved to finally nail that bastard that they didn't dig deep. So this kid does something. Haley loses it, stabs him. Tall tries to hide the body for her, gets caught with it, and takes the fall. Like father, like daughter, it all fits. That's what she's singing about in her song. You pull out your phone. I think you and I need to have a little chat with Haley Rose. You dial a number after a one ring McKenzie picks up. Hi Macy, the film set is so cool. Listen Mackenzie, I need you to bring Haley into the precinct for questioning right now. I don't care if she's in the middle of shooting. Okay, got it, we'll be right in. Try not to give away that something's up. She might try to run, tell her it's important. Yes, ma'am, I'll go. Blam! A deafening sh gunshot on the line makes you pull your ear away from the phone. Tiny screams crowd all over the speaker, followed by a hail of gunfire. Mackenzie! Mackenzie! The line goes dead. What just happened? Gunshots, I'm calling Beckham. We need to send everyone to the Galactic Pictures lot. Damn, Cassandra's filming there. Dave spins the wheel hard, his tires squeal. He flips on the siren and stomps down on the grass pedal, hightailing the car towards Galactic Studios. Now playing as Detective Dave Riez, you kick through the door to the Galactic Studios set and dart inside with Sam, guns drawn. Mackenzie! Cassandra! You're met with only the uh, silence and darkness. You step forward and your foot comes down in a puddle. You look down. Jesus, Macy, I've got blood here. Me too. Sam shines a flashlight ahead where a pair of bodies lie face down and pulls a dark red. She checks her pulses. They're gone. You slink forward past knocked over light fixtures, feet crunching through the shattered glass. The green screen is ripped to tatters by a pair of shotgun blasts. Christ, what happened here? Tall happened. You lower your gun at a loss for words. Haley, Cassandra, Mackenzie. I don't see them anywhere. Just then, you hear a weak cough from the other side of the side. You and Sam dart over to debris to where a uniformed figure lies prone and motionless. Mackenzie! Sam rolls her over, revealing a ghastly wound. Mackenzie winces, winces, growing pale. <sighs> Mailing sirens outside. Announce the arrival of the ambulance. You lift Mackenzie in your arms, her blood wetting your suit. You carry her to the entrance where the MTs are rolling in the gurneys. You lay her down on one gently when Mackenzie's blood-stained hand grips her wrist. Her eyes focus on you. Her voice comes out shallow and weak. He... he took her. Took who? C Cassandra. He he took her. Where's Haley? Mackenzie. Did Tall kidnap Haley too? Mackenzie gives a pained shake of her head. No. Haley told him to come here. They were working together. Damn it! Haley must have known once we figured out Tall was her dad, we'd realize she killed that boy in the trunk. She knew we'd come here, and now she's running with Cassandra as a hostage. Haley and Tall must be looking for a way out of the country. Mackenzie, where'd they take Cassandra? Stay with me! Where were they headed? They. 
Ne. Kenzie's eyes roll back and she falls unconscious. Damn it! Can you wake her back up? Cassandra's clock is ticking, and right now we have no idea where they took her. Yumkees might be able to keep Mackenzie conscious long enough to tell us everything she saw. Wake Mackenzie up to play a special scene as Officer Mackenzie and find out. Well, unfortunately we can't do that. Don't wake her. No, get her to the hospital. Yumkees nod and load Mackenzie's gurney into the ambulance. What the hell do we do now? Cassandra's dead unless we find her quick. We just have to think. How would they try to get out of the country? They wouldn't risk getting an airliner. With one call, we could have TSA on alert. Then again, it's also a risky to try and get past the border security on the road. Remember, we're not dealing with a regular fugitive. Haley's a rich celebrity. She has access, resources. Hmm, she'll leave by plane or car. Car would be stupid. Tough call, but knowing how she is a celebrity and her um, agent back in the studio was talking about how she did have a private jet that was going to be going to England. Let's go to plane. They don't need to get on an airliner. Remember what the music, music producer told us? Haley has a private plane. Where would it be parked? A lot of celebs have their jets at LAX. Damn it! They have 15 minute head start. Then we've got to get to the airport now or Cassandra is good as dead. Well folks, it looks like we have come to the conclusion of this chapter. Yeah, it looks like we'll be getting a new chapter, which um, is 14 of 15. Uh, let me just double check which one's the next one. Oh, we got a diamond for that one. Yep, 14 of 15. So you know what? If you did like the content, feel free to like, comment, share, and if you're not already, subscribe. And until the next time, guys, have a good one. Peace.